In studio Gosh. with us, uh, Judy Boykin, who has brought the Boykin brownies. Uh, and, and this, I'm telling you right now, if you were going through the Donner Pass and you had these, you wouldn't have had to turn to cannibalism. You could have fed off these for a couple of years. It's a hearty brownie. This has got to weigh 10 pounds. I was going to say, you just got a workout right there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a pump. Yeah, the Boykin brownies are in the house. They smell so good. And Pastor Ed Hall as well. Good morning, Pastor. How are you, sir? Good morning. Good to have you back. We did this segment last year for the crosswalk. And uh, was it was it last year that you were able to reinstitute it? Or uh, did, it ha did it have to go away for a while for COVID? Uh, yes, it went away for one year. But uh, the crosswalk has been going on for... Well, I've been in Martinsburg at my church, Mount Zion United Methodist Church, for 19 years. And it was going on prior to that. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a event that I believe touches everybody. And it's an attempt to actually get people to know what God does for them. And uh, so many times we forget what he does for us and uh, until we truly need him and we have exhausted everything else and then we call on him. And uh, the, the crosswalk basically tells us that God is always there, and he's trying to communicate with us. And this is what we are doing in the crosswalk. We are communicating God's word to the people. And you probably say, well, you only have maybe a 100 people that do the walk. But it's not the people that are doing the walk. It's the emphasis is on the cross, and the cross is the most important mm -hmm. thing. So uh, when I first came there, uh, there were individuals like uh, uh, Mike and uh, Mike Cantley, uh, who has moved on. Uh, I can't think of the pastor from uh, Calvary. Al Clip was his name. Oh, yeah. Al Clip. Uh, I remember I, Al. Al Clip was instrumental in starting the uh, crosswalk. But unfortunately, he has left this world. We had Al on the show yes. um, years ago about that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so there are many pastors that have followed in my foot or not in my foot I have followed in their footsteps and uh, it, it's a wonderful thing to do uh, this year we will have an individual that uh, will take on the role of Jesus Christ I did it last year and carried the cross and with my my Jesus robe and my sandals and everything. Did you get good reviews? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but let me say this. It was rather cold because you only had a Jesus robe on and you had the crown and everything. But I say that because being cold, can you imagine how he felt? carrying that cross by himself and being beaten but also hanging on that cross and so uh when we look at the big picture hmm. this is just a small part mm -hmm. of it. judy what time uh, were the particulars come on much closer to Alrighty, your microphone by um, the way too far away. we would like people to come to um um Trinity. Trinity. Boy, I just... Whoa. <laughs> um, at Trinity Church, uh, just you'll see us, can, you know, just all over right in front, mm -hmm. and it's a chance if you... Well, well, I don't know anybody. You'll know everybody before the day <laughs> is over. Um, uh, come uh, dressed warm, please. Um, we do have a facility if you need a quick stop before we go. It's a wonderful walk. 
I've, I came here for two years and I'm now here a lifetime. <laughs> and each time that I go on some sort of an activity like this, there's still more to see. Um, you really, um, for me personally, uh, just to walk around the town knowing the age of the town, looking at how many houses of worship we have in this small town. It is probably out of 30 areas on the East Coast, we're pretty much almost the most number of the. So um, when you come, please come warm. Uh, you can use the bathrooms and everything else before we get going. And uh, we're not going to walk so fast that you can't mm -hmm. keep up. But you can sing along the way. Uh, uh, there are people designated to do readings as we go. And if you've never had that before, um, I think you're really going to have a different feeling about what we have um, to be grateful for and what the real meanings of, of Easter are. How many stops will you be making and how long is the walk uh, time-wise? There will be seven stops. And Judy mentioned readings, but there will be sermonettes. So, you know, as pastors, sometimes pastors get long-winded. <laughs> so we have to keep uh, time in mind, uh, a time frame in mm -hmm. mind. But uh, we, we start out with the, the first stop. And uh, the word <clears throat> is on uh, Father, forgive them. And the second one uh, is you. today you will be with me in paradise. The third is woman, behold your son. And the fourth is my God, why have you forsaken me? The fifth is... I thirst. The six, it is finished. And the final word is, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. I say all this because it was the last seven words of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. as he hung on the cross. And uh, each pastor or minister will have approximately seven minutes to to speak uh, and so they have to practice to keep it at seven minutes <laughs> do you have do you have somebody there with like a little bell or a horn or something all right <laughs> uh, but uh it's a lot of fun and uh the the, the thing about it is and i know i'm a pastor and I like to speak about what the Bible says, okay? And in the Bible, Moses was getting ready to go on to be with the Lord. But God approached him and told him, he said, tell one generation after another generation what God has done for you. And we as a generation, we have failed. We have failed to tell what God has done in our lives. And when you look at how our generation and the future generations go. If we don't continue telling people about what God has done in their lives, then uh, our churches, our churches, will dwindle. And when I say dwindle, you if you look at the attendance in our churches today, I know COVID took a uh, took a hit on a lot of the church's attendance, but uh, the pews are not full like they used to be. 
And so uh, we need to go back to the uh, basic principles of hey, going to church. <laughs> mm. But uh, it's coming. Matt it's Miller. coming. At the end of the walk, um, there are some extra activities as well, correct? Uh, yes. Uh, immediately after the walk, uh, Trinity Episcopal Church, they will uh, invite each and every one to come to a Good Friday service. And immediately after that Good Friday service, there will be uh, soup and sandwiches served. And it is delicious, mm -hmm. I, I tell you, especially if you've been out in the cold <laughs> and then come in for uh, yeah. some hot soup and a sandwich. Well, I mean, as far as hunger goes, we're all very hungry right now because I am staring at a gigantic thing of brownies that Judy very graciously baked and I can, brought I in. can smell it right now. Well, you got them right next to you. That would be, I couldn't do it. It's, it's My arms are long, but not, I mean, if they were, if it was closer, I would have and some. And it's no nuts. It's just um, magical fruit in there. Oh. Do yeah. you have the Boykin cranberries in there like yeah. you usually do? Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Very healthy. Very healthy. Mm -hmm. yes. Um Matt, you walked with us last year. Yes, my wife and I were able yes, to uh, be a part of the walk. And uh, I think, uh, Pastor, what you were mentioning earlier, um, not only the number of people that might be in the walk, but uh, the, the witness that it is to the community as yes. life is going on around you as normal. And, you know, it certainly draws attention when you've got 100 people walking. Some mm -hmm. carry some different signs or banners mm -hmm. to recognize Christ and, and his sacrifice for us and so forth. So there is, uh, there's, there's that element, you know, that you're, you're catching people in daily life to kind of get them to think about what the, the Easter season is really all about. I, I found when we went, I don't know that the um, square is allowing people to give, give things away, mm -hmm. but so many of the um, men and more and more young men who are just hanging out. Mm -hmm. um, they last year, um, it was incredible when they came up and said, "I can't walk away from here. Can you pray for me?" And we stopped mm -hmm. for um, a, a lot longer than we expected, mm -hmm. but they were they were not looking for a handout. They know that they were lost. That's why mm -hmm. they're standing in a cold open space downtown now yeah. a couple guys did stay with us but then couldn't go too far um i think that that is such a visual thing in your home right here mm. and see that people are just waiting not always for a hit of of booze mm. or drugs mm. but they just need someone Spiritual and food. and you don't really I I tell the kids I, sure you can have a conversation but you then have to know how to end it and to walk away and tell them where they can have more services or someone to sit with them it was quite a few mm -hmm. um, and I think if you've never walked around downtown bundle up and join us I mean there's been changes Look at the faces of the people watching you because you are the model. Um, a couple of my old, now they're all grown up, they always say, well, we're old now. And they say, you walk all through downtown. Why do you do that? You have a nice home. I said, I always work downtown. I want to see the people. How are they doing? What did I fail as a citizen in not making it better for them and she said i never thought about that and i said that's because mm -hmm. your family gave you what you have and you've had that but are you sharing it so i think when it's visible like that especially on a on a holiday well you know especially this one that um we had someone one time um in fact i think it was last year they said I think, I think I learned this in Sunday school. Mm -hmm. Do I have to mm -hmm. sign up? I said, no, just walk with us. And it's wonderful. And it doesn't have to be this school, this, this church or that church. It's 
If you feel that you can do this for your own self, nobody else is going to get in your way. And uh, we had a couple guys from the, um, from the mission. Now, one of them mm -hmm. we had to get trans transportation back because he's very frail and it was a little too mm -hmm. cold for him. So uh, give it a try. Just give it a try. I mean, it's... Before you know. we run out of time, Judy, and just to tell everybody, if you're just joining us, Pastor Ed Hall from Mount Zion United Methodist Church and uh, Judy Boykin of the Boykin Brownies is here <laughs> to talk about the crosswalk. Uh, again, tell me specifically where to meet, what time, and what day. Okay. The uh, crosswalk will take place uh, March the 29th. That is Friday. Uh, we would like to have everyone come and be there by 10 o'clock, and at 10.30, the crosswalk will start. From where, sir? It starts at Trinity United Methodist Church. And we have new people moving into the area all the time. What is the address of Trinity United Methodist Church? Uh, it looks like uh, 220 West Martin Street, right yes. downtown. There you go, 220 West Martin, either by 10-ish. By yeah, it's just one block off the main, the mm -hmm. main road. Very good. And they should expect to conclude about what time? Uh, it normally lasts a, approximately two hours. Two hours. Dress yeah. warmly. Oh, yes. <laughs> and you get fed. Yes. Any Boykin brownies on the premises? You get, you get fed physically, mm -hmm. but also spiritually. Mm. Well, Easter Sunday is it's represented, of course, in spring by rebirth and everything. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, it seems like every Easter Sunday, it's always sunny at the end of Mass, too. Mm -hmm. So uh, everything comes together nicely. Uh, Pastor Ed, good to see you again. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Judy, thank you for being you. Well, <laughs> it's a hard act. <laughs> <laughs> it's a harder act to follow. Uh, we have a final minute coming up after this.